What did I do on my last night in Tokyo? I've been to Tokyo dozens of times, but with only one night left, where to go and what to do was paralysis by analysis. There was one decision I didn't have to make, 85 millimeters. Focus on the details, isolate the individual subjects really aggressively. Sony's 85 millimeter F1.8 was my go-to 85, but after six months of testing, it's now been replaced by Nikon's 85 millimeter as my top telephoto prime. Today, let's talk through my long-term thoughts on Nikon's 85mm f1.8 after thousands of nighttime images across three Tokyo districts, which might help you figure out where to go to get that authentic Japan experience. I purchased the Nikon ZF, the 85mm f1.8, and the DJI Osmo Pocket 3 that filmed almost all the Japan footage you're about to see with my own money. Freewell did send me their magnetic ND and lens adapters for the Osmo Pocket 3, but they didn't sponsor this video. They had no input into this video's production, and as always, I have final edit. Hello, I'm Jack, scientist by day, street photographer by night, and this is Bokeh Therapy. My day job can be overwhelming, but I can escape. I'm lucky enough to visit Japan every year, but on the last two trips I noticed something odd. At the start of these trips, I shoot mostly 35, but by the end it's all 85. Sony's 85mm f1.8 weighs 371 grams and using lighter lenses as the trip goes on makes perfect sense. But on my most recent trip, I brought my Nikon ZF and its 85mm weighs 470 grams, heavier and more front heavy than its 35mm counterpart, but I still ended that trip shooting nothing but 85. It's a beautiful lens, minimalist design, large metal focus ring, tight weather ceiling, but if the ergonomics aren't great, the longer working distance harder for travel, why did I choose it over the 35 as the trip went on. It took a while, then I realized I was just trying to find my ikigai. On that last night in Tokyo, the rest of my family had already gone to sleep. Other than time, there were no other limitations. The first spot I thought of was the last spot from the trip before, Omoto Sando. The Ginza subway line, Omoto Sando station, about a 20 minute walk from either Harajuku or Shibuya. I chose to walk to Shibuya. You won't see this route on any lonely planet guide because the subway rides much quicker and it's boring mostly filled with locals going about their day. The main thoroughfare is broken up by connecting overpasses so I could always go up to get a different vantage point. It's the journey, not the destination, because you want to know a secret? I'm not the biggest fan of the scramble crossing. If it's your first time there, go back and forth that crossing to your heart's content, but these days it all feels a bit forced. There's more tourists than locals. Every photo feels staged, not authentic. Sure, good night. How authentic should we expect our photos to be? Francois d'Albert was furious. What she thought was a harmless series of happy snaps turned into one of the most famous street photographs of all time. D'Albert sued Robert Deneuve for damages and royalties, claiming she was an unwitting participant in a commercial campaign disguised as candid street portraiture. Deneuve was unapologetic, saying, I don't photograph life as it is. I photograph life as I would like it to be. And even the judge dismissed the case. Deneuve is not the first and won't be the last unreliable narrator in street photography. How authentic should we expect our photos to be? Sure, good night. Every shot from that two hour photo walk in Omoto Sando was shot on Sony's 85mm f1.8. It's affordable, lightweight, and Sony's quickest autofocusing option at 85mm. So what about the Nikon version? Nikon's 85mm f1.8 has quick autofocus, but it's not as quick as the Sony. It locks on fast, even on the smallest tracking box, but it can lose subjects if they move too fast back and forth while 3D tracking. But the Nikon's autofocus is good enough. No hunting or pulsing, but it's Good enough, enough. My second favorite nighttime photography spot is in and around Shinjuku. And all the Shinjuku footage you're about to see was filmed with the Osmo Pocket 3 and the wide angle adapter. This is fine at night, but during the day you need an ND filter to control exposure, but DJI's own magnetic filters don't fit on the wide lens adapter. But Freewell's ND filters and lens adapters are stackable. I like the minimal color cast, the footage looks quite sharp, and it gives you a lot of control over exposure. There's two caveats. One, the wide angle lens only works when the macro lens adapter is also attached and two the magnets could be a little stronger so just be a bit careful when you're running and gunning three different nd filters and three different lens adapters all in the bundle it's a much better deal than dji's filter combo if you just got a z63 but don't have a cf express type b reader freewell's all-in-one memory card case and the cf express type b reader might be useful for you as well thanks again to freewell for sending these to me for review 
Jaya Shinjuku is massive and in of itself amazing to photograph, but for me it all starts around the southern exit. You can cross the road via the overpass to get a closer view of Dokomo Tower. In Shinjuku, the entertainment district is so close to the business district, cab drivers to gachapon operators, parking inspectors to gas engineers, amidst an endless sea of salarymen. It does get a little quieter as you head closer to Nishi Shinjuku, where suited government employees and businessmen alike were getting ready to head home for the day. Walking in and amongst the crowds on this side of town makes for a truly authentic experience. I wanted to shoot wide, using a 35mm to capture everything, but after a while I strangely felt jealous not of the people, but of the city. Because everything feels right when all the pieces fit. Everyone had a purpose, a reason to be exactly where they were, while I was feeling more lost than I could ever remember. I was overworked, underappreciated, isolated, forgotten. And for the first time in a long time, I didn't know what was next. The biggest flaw of Nikon's 85mm f1.8 is in its handling, especially on smaller camera bodies like the ZF. The weight and overall size is not the issue, but rather the 4 inches it protrudes out from the camera. Compared to Sony's 85mm f1.8, this is almost an inch further out, which does throw off the balance of smaller street cameras more than I'd like. Not as sharp across the frame as their reference standard 50mm f1.8 S wide open, but it is at least as sharp as Sony's 85. A bit of vignetting is fine for a telephoto prime where center framing is the most common use case. A bit of cat's eye bokeh in the corners but it's still very smooth and pleasing overall but the best thing about it is something it lacks. Purple fringing. Unlike Sony's 85mm f1.8 I don't have to spend any time fixing purple fringing in post. Like the rest of Nikon's f1.8 lineup this 85mm is a pro grade lens priced at a non pro grade level which doesn't need to be upgraded. It's more expensive than a Sony but the time I save in post alone makes it worth it. Surely in Japan, one of the most brutal, hard-working cultures, I could find catharsis for my own lack of work-life balance. My ikigai, what I have to offer the world that both sustains and rewards me, was nowhere to be found and misery loves company. My selection bias kicked in. Isolating subjects again and again with an 85mm on lonely streets was the easiest way to tell my preconceived narrative of professional alienation and over time I packed the 35 away. At this point, I wasn't trying to capture the authentic Japan. I had also become an unreliable narrator. My number one location for nighttime photography in Tokyo is Ueno. It's fantastic during the day, but it turns into something special at night. Ame Yokocho has its own unique blend of fresh food and Americana fashion, but as you move further away from the smell of seafood, Ueno's side streets are just as memorable. Clean shots of crossings and cyclists, vintage bookstores and florists closing as the izakayas are opening, all against the backdrop of Tokyo Skytree. If you catch the Ueno line to Shin Okachimichi, you can walk down Kiyosubashi Shidori and hit Satake Shopping Street without much, if any, tourist fanfare, authentically immersed into Tokyo's daily life. Armed with my Nikon ZF and the 85mm f1.8, which of these three districts did I choose for my last night in Tokyo? All of the above. That's the beauty of Tokyo. Every photo walks just a short subway or cab ride away, and even in the most boring districts, street photographers like me don't have to settle. As I snapped away, capturing commuters working harder jobs and longer hours than I could possibly imagine, they all seemed fine, light, unencumbered, sure. As a culture, Japan doesn't wear their heart on their sleeves, and yes, they're predisposed to let go of what they can't control, but maybe, just maybe, these people have found their ikigai. The best they have to offer the world in exchange for a sliver of validation. Something to sustain them while contributing to the greater whole. If I wanted to find my ikigai, I needed to get to work, so it was time to let go of that frustration. Sure, good night. For the past six months, I've been building this channel and last week we hit 5,000 subs. I'm not quitting my day job anytime soon, but building this community has been the most fulfilling thing I've done in a long time. Thank you to Jamie Self for supporting the Nikon ZS video and to all of you for watching to this point. I've learned a lot of lessons going from zero to 5K subs, the most important of which is how to fail gracefully as a creator. You'll find that video here 
when it's ready to go. I'm Jack, capturing peace in every moment.